couple of basic reasons people stay right where they are. They do the same thing, even if it's painful, even if they're in misery, they'll do the same thing. And basically because the pain of change, the unknown, the fear of the unknown of what change would be like is more scary or more frightening than the pain that they're experiencing now. Did, did you ever, have you ever heard the, the old uh, adage, you know, it's the, the devil that you know uh, versus the devil that you don't know? And so people will stay in misery, stay in the same rut, same routine, hoping things get better, but never willing to change. And there's a couple of reasons, because you will settle for where you are. You've, you've settled, you just kind of go, hey, this is close enough, life is pretty good, I'm gonna just stick with what I know, I'm gonna stay in the story that I have, and I'm going to do exact same thing. Sometimes we settle for second best when God has something better in store for us. We often can grow complacent, right? We kind of say, well, someday, you know, someday things will be different. I, I, I think that someday um, we will do things, but today I'm really busy and I've got a lot of things to do. My schedule is more demanding than I thought, and so someday I will find that story that God had always promised. Everything that it says in the Bible, I, I kind of believe, but someday I'm going to really look into it. And then there are those people that, among us that, that really become cynics, basically, kind of the idea of like, well, things just can't get any better for me, right? That's just not in the cards. If you don't know me, I'm not really very talented. I don't have good skills. I can't do this and I can't do that. This morning, I heard the story from um, Nancy, uh, Nancy Barton, and she was telling me about this little uh, first grade little girl um, who's really, really having a hard time in school because basically her parents or her, her mother really doesn't care whether she succeeds or not, doesn't really care if she does her homework. And so the little girl is in the first grade and cannot really keep up with the other students. Now, if that situation remains unaltered in the future, that little girl inevitably is going to become a cynic. She's going to believe that, well, I, here's all the things I can't do. I can't do all of these things over the years. I've, it's been proven to me that I can't do these things, right? That happens to a lot of us. We absorb part of that as part of just growing up, part of competing with other people, getting a sense of self-identity. And so when we begin to talk about a, a better story, some people just go, that's just not in the cards for me, all right? But for those of you that really are hoping that there's something better for you, we've got really good news. God has a great plan for you, but I need for you deep down inside, and this is the gut check for you, I need you to do me a favor, and I just want you to close your eyes, if you will, just real quickly. Um, don't go to sleep because I'll make sure you stay awake. And just ask yourself, was I made for more? More in my family, more in my relationship with God, more in my, my marriage, more in my, my kids, my work, my life. I, was I made for more? And basically in the quietness of your own thoughts, just ask, I believe. I believe. I believe I was made for more. I believe that it's possible I believe God wants more for me than where I'm at right now. Okay, open up your eyes. That's gonna frame the rest of what we talk about. Because for those of you that believe that you were made for more, those of you that are ready to accept what God has for you and said, I'm ready, I believe there's more, I just have to look for it. We're gonna begin the journey of figuring out what it is that God has in store for you. I wanted to show you a really quick video, if you don't mind, for just a minute. God is speaking to the people through the prophet uh, Isaiah, and the people have lost their identity, they've lost who they are, and God speaks to them through the prophet Isaiah, and he said, let me kind of give you an analogy of what I have in store for you. He said, you, will be like wing, like eagles. You will rise up on the wings of eagles. He said, youth, you think youth is great? Youth will grow tired, they will wear out, they will be burdened, but you, you will be like eagles. And the question is, is, 
What is, this, what is he talking about? Why does he give us this metaphor for what your life could be? And as you look at this, what are the feelings that come over you? What are the things that you think about as you see the eagle soar you know, to the highest heights above the clouds, looking down over the horizon? Why does God use that metaphor? Why does he use that image? Well, there's a couple of things that I thought of when I saw that image, and especially as I read over that passage over and over again. What are those things that kind of come to you as you think about what God is saying? Well, there's a couple of things that I think about when I thought about the eagle in that there's a sense of it being graceful, right? There's even a sense of it being probably the reason that it's used even in our own country is it's free, it's liberated, it's no longer bound by earth. And I thought about this contrast. How many of you have, you know, we love seeing those little pictures of penguins, right? Penguins are like the epitome of being earthbound, right? They have, really, they have wings, but they don't really use them for flight, and so they waddle wherever they go. And sometimes I feel like, as people, God had something great in store for us, something that helps us to rise above where we are now. I want for all of you to rise up and float on the wings of eagles. I imagine wing eagles being in that, that quiet stillness of the, of, the, of the sky. What they do is they just spread out their wings and these thermal drafts carry them aloft and they just glide effortlessly through the air, and God said, this is what I have in store for you. This is what I believe. And what I wanted to ask you is, would you say right now, your life models more like a penguin? You kind of waddle through life, you got your schedule that you gotta keep, and you gotta get the house fixed, and you gotta get this done, and then tomorrow you gotta go to the job, and you gotta make sure, you, you go through all of these tasks. Right, all of these things, that's who I am. If I were to ask you, if we met the first time and I said, hi, how would you identify yourself? By what you do or who you are, right? Oftentimes we we get so focused on where our little feet are going that we fail to look to the heavens. And so God is speaking to to Israel and he wants them to understand that they were made for so much more than where they are what is possible, what is out there for us. And so I wanted to share this passage from Isaiah. If you're in that mode where you say, I believe I was made for more. I believe there's something that is calling me upwards, something that is telling me to to rise up. If that's part of your dynamic, then I want you to pay attention. If you're in that mode where you're saying, I'm not made for anything. I don't want anything, I'm comfortable where I am. Well then, we have some coloring books in the back. And for the next hour, just just color and just pay attention, but this is for those people that are really ready to, to make a leap and feel what God had in store for us. I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 40. God says the following. He says, to whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry hosts one by one and calls calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and his mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob, and why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know and have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary, and the young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is the word of God for the people of God. God. Israel had, had kind of fallen away. They had lost the passion for what life was in store, and so God is trying to reconnect with who they are. God is constantly inviting us away from the routines, the boredom, the day-to-day chores of life, and to see the bigger picture of life before it passes away. And so throughout this passage, you get a sense of God constantly telling you, rise up. You were made for more. Are you ready to experience all that you were made to be? 
So often we go through life just kind of feeling that we're just part of the background, just part of the story that is being told, when in fact God is trying to tell us, you are a masterpiece. You have never been before and you will never be again. You are a one-of-a-kind creation. For this moment and this time, you are a masterpiece for the world to enjoy. Why are we hiding it away? God says, rise up, but oftentimes we hear another voice depression or despair. We hear negative voices that tell us, sit down, who do you think you are, right? You can't do any of that. The story is for all of us, this tension that we feel between these two extremes. Which of those two voices are you going to listen to? Which of those two fears, those two uh, callings are you going to respond to? What you believe about yourself is what you become. If you believe that you were made to rise above the heavens, if you were made to see the bigger picture, to walk with God, then you will see life differently. The first thing that I want us to think about in our story is God comes and he says, who do you think I am? Are you able to see the big picture? He said, I am the Lord of hosts. I call the starry skies out and I call them by name. Have you lost that sense of majesty? If you want to soar on the wings of eagles, the first thing that you have to be able to do is you have to be able to see the sky. How many of us are so focused on the day-to-day -day chores, our finances, our struggles, our doubts, our fears, that we no longer look to the starry skies? In essence, God is saying, look up. Rise up above it. You have got to get to a place where you said, I was made for this. This is who I am as a Christian. Jesus has called you by name and said you were made to be one of my apostles, one of my disciples. You are not ordinary. You have been called by God into a great and glorious mission. Why are you still waddling on the ground? Rise up. You have to begin to believe that you were made for more. In Psalm 26, it said, I love the Lord. I, Lord, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. This morning, we had like 20, you know, it, it was very snowy, and I, part of it is I understand. I, I'm kind of speaking to the choir here to some, some extent. This morning, it was great. We had like 20 people, and in a sanctuary this size, they were scattered all over until the beginning of service, and then they all came and they gathered right here. And it's not because they had to be here. They get to be here. They want to be here. There's something about flight, about the, the heavens that they want more of. They're not here because they gotta go through the routine. They're not looking at their watch saying, how do we get to the restaurant on time? They say, I need to learn how to fly above my circumstances. I need to learn a skill that I don't have. As a penguin, we waddle through life. And sometimes we actually do it rather comically, don't we? You have people that you work with, you kind of, they go through the same routines, making the same mistakes, and yet God is calling you to go up above it all. You cannot begin to believe that you were made for more until you elevate, and so God says, who are you gonna compare me to? If I have called you to something more, why are you doubting? You were made for more. You are so much, and some people say, well, how do you know? that I was made for more. How do you know that I'm worth it? Because of what was already paid for you. Because of how much God already put on the line for you. If you ever doubt that you are worth it, all you have to do is say, God, what am I worth? And he would say, I gave my son for you. Look to the sky and believe that that's where you were destined to be. You cannot learn to soar until you learn to look to the sky. You cannot soar until you begin to grow wings. You have to begin to develop the skill to catch the, those warm thermal drafts. God is constantly giving you opportunities, opportunities to stretch your wings. It's always kind of funny when you watch birds that begin, oftentimes they begin to, to flex those muscles, they begin to flutter in the nest because they know that there's gonna come a day where they're going to have to fly. They have to stretch them. We have to also begin to learn how to stretch those wings, to grow in new ways. You cannot come to church and just show up on a Sunday morning and say that's all there is to it. C.S. Lewis, I think, was the one that first said that Christians are like eggs, they will either hatch or they will spoil. 
have you ever been around Christians that have spoiled? They sat in the same spot for too many years and that becomes their spot and that becomes their music and that becomes their style and it becomes about them. For Christians, they recognize that it's a transformation. It's not about you, it's about what lies ahead. It's about growing and about stretching, about moving beyond where you are now. So deep down inside as you begin a new year, think about your own faith journey. I, I am hatching into a new and exciting part of my life. And sometimes I imagine for a bird, that's gotta be really scary, that first flight. I would think it would be, but that's what they were made for. To see a bird walking on the ground is just not natural. They were made for flight, and so were you. To see a Christian that's sitting in the same pew year after year is just not natural. You were made for flight. You were made to be a disciple of Christ. You cannot soar until you understand the sky is calling to you. You cannot soar until you develop wings, and you cannot soar without training. You have got to learn how to use these things. You've been given gifts and talents. We call them, in the Bible, we call them spiritual gifts. These are your talents that allow you to catch those warm thermals and to do things nobody else can do. Nobody else can do what you can do. Nobody else can capture those winds. In Psalm 32, God says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. God wants to teach you how to do more than you ever thought possible. There's nothing more enjoyable than watching people serve others and see the smile come across their face as they know I'm making a real difference in their lives. I'm making things better. Me, not somebody else, not theology, not referencing some scripture text, but using my hands, my gifts, my talents to be a blessing to other people. You've got to learn the skills that are necessary. And that follows for just about everything. Most of the time, most, we all sit here and we enjoy um, Jason and the praise team, right? We love the gifts that they give us, but guess what they have to do? It's called practice. This doesn't come just instantaneously. How many months and years has Jason been practicing at the piano so that he can play so effortlessly? If you wanna capture what God is doing, it takes time. It takes what we call commitment. Commitment is the price that you have to pay for freedom. You have got to learn the skills over time. We're not here this morning because it's part of, well, maybe some, that it's part of our routine, it's just, it's just what we do. We're here because we're learning skills. We're learning how to take flight. We're learning a new way of living so that we're not mired in the day-to-day -day problems of, of, of our culture, but we can rise above it and say, I have soared in the eagle's realm. I have been with God and I have seen the bigger picture and it's going to be okay. But those are skills that we have got to learn. We have got to begin to practice so we have to learn to look to the sky to see what's there. We have wings that we are developing. We learn from the people that have gone before and those that have gone after. We learn from what God says in his owner's manual, which we call the scriptures. When was the last time you really opened up your owner's manual? But ultimately, we have got to begin to learn that there comes a deadline. Somebody once said, by the way, what makes a great football game? For you, what would make a great football game? Great quarterback, maybe? Linebackers, great defense, great offense. Somebody once said, what makes a great football game is the clock. There comes a point of a decision, winner or loser. There's a pressure that says, we're running out of time, we've got to finally have it resolved. And it's that sense of coming to closure how many of us say someday we'll do great things, we'll get involved, someday when things get a little easier, I'll open up the Bible and be a part of a Bible, Some, someday, and that day never comes. If you wanna learn to fly, there comes a point that you've got to begin to take a step. You've got to begin. You can't just put it off inevitably because there's this danger of ambiguity of saying someday, and guess what, nothing ever changes. I wanna hearken back to where we began. I believe, 
I believe that I was made for more. I believe that it's not just my job that I do. I don't believe that my life is the summation of my possessions, what I have in the bank. I don't believe that it's just the clothes that I wear. I believe it's about my character. I believe God wants to soar with me on the wings of eagles. It's not about youth. Youth will tire and grow weary and fade away. But for you, you will soar on the wings of eagles. Are you ready to take that journey? Are you ready to take that leap? Or are you still stuck in your story? I like this picture, right? But let me ask you, do you believe like this? Or do you kind of look at it and say, well, that's kind of acute, but it's not for me. I can't, I'm a cynic, don't you know? I can't do those kind of things. Maybe you've grown complacent and say, I just show up on Sunday and I feel good about myself, hear some good music and that's all there is to it. Maybe you've kind of settled and say, well, this is as good as it's gonna get for me. But Jesus, but God is speaking through the prophet Isaiah. He said, who are you gonna compare me to? I put into you a calling to the skies, to the heavens, to the clouds and above the clouds. You were made to soar on the wings of eagles. If you're ready to begin that journey, take that step, get involved, begin to develop those wings. God can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Begin to believe that today is a new beginning for you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have called us to this place because you believe more in us than we believe in ourselves. We're often filled with doubts and fears. We're afraid of our shadow and we're afraid of failure, and yet you have called us to something beyond our wildest imagination. Help us, Father, where we fail. Help us to strengthen one another, to challenge each other, to bring out the best in one another, and to accept those opportunities to jump and go into the skies with you. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen.